Here I am at the Roka Memorial Park, which is in the Kanagawa Prefecture of Japan. It's a beautiful uh, residence, an old residence from a writer and philosopher. And uh, it's just this idyllic little place that you can come to and visit and just take in the sights and the sounds of a typical park. Okay, so I'm starting in with a limited palette. I always like to work with a limited palette, and in this case, it's Nickel Yellow Azo, and uh, it's a very translucent yellow, which uh, is similar to yellow ochre, but ends up being quite translucent, quite transparent. The other color I'm using is Cobalt Turquoise, and also Magenta. So we can see here that I'm beginning to block in the biggest shapes first. Always start with the big shapes and try and keep those big shapes with one fell swoop, not dabbling at them, just trying to keep everything quite big. You can see I'm using a very large quill, which is helpful. It's a quill mop, so it holds a lot of pigment. Also, I'm trying to keep a plan going with uh, the cool shapes first. As we see, I blocked in the sky and the cool shapes in the buildings. Now I'm going to the cool yellows. So the painting is contre -jour. We're looking into the light. And very quickly, I'm establishing a dark middle tone and light so that I can kind of key everything as I paint along. Also, because it's a big brush, it's just getting the job done quickly. It holds a lot of water and pigment, and it's just a quick, fun way to paint. Very quickly, we can see things blocking in and taking shape. I'm using my Big Fat number 6 Rigger, which I love that brush. It's, uh, it uh, can load with a lot of pigment. Because it's fat in one sense, it can make perfect tree trunk shapes, but of course because it's a rigger, it comes down to a point and then I can get those lovely calligraphy shapes with the brush, with the, the branches. The rigger brush also creates some great texture, we can see here. So I just scumble it and drag it, and it just gets a, a contrast between the hard edges and rough edges. So here we are blocking in the middle value grass shapes, and things are taking shape. It's helping me assess where the light is going to come from, and here we go. All of those dark passages really are just one middle tone value. And you can see how we're beginning to read the picture so well with the cast shadows. Also, it's helpful at this point to determine the focal point. So with the board slightly tipped, I run a bead around those shapes where the umbrellas are and just slowly work down the page, taking my time working around the figures. It's a good time also to assess the darkest darks, and because I want the figures to be the focal point, I've uh, ramped it up there, I've made it darker in that one spot there. But already we can see light coming into it very well. And the little bushes, they're catching the light as we look into the light, so I'm quite pleased with that. Here we have um, pops of color in the focal point, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And my final touches would be just a few corrections of cast shadows, which didn't take long, I would say. This was the final little bit of dressing the costume, you know, the tiny bits at, at the end. So it's pretty, pretty much done. 
but I can see there's a few places where I can throw in some shadows. Other than that, I see I also popped in some warm colors. I tried to keep it pretty monochromatic, except for the um, outfits on the, the, the figures in traditional costume. So here we go. Here's the final shadows. And I'm quite pleased with that. You can see how the brush, if it's scumbled or dragged on its side, it creates quick texture. And I'm quite pleased with the amount of soft edges and hard edges. So it's, um, I'm gonna say this is a, a delightful end to a delightful day in Zushi. Thank you.